I had a patient that was 336 pounds. Big guy. He had a, a bioprosthetic valve put in recently. Like I don't want to say recently, quite a few years ago, but it's still pretty recent. He was in for aortic stenosis. I get him, I put the probe on the patient. After laying him on the left side, so he's a big guy, he's in as outpatient, so we do kind of got a little bit better bed for that. But I get him laying on the left side. This is what I get for his, for his gradients initially. One and a half meters per second. And I'm like, well, why did the doctor order this? This guy's got normal, nice envelope. There's a little bit of AI, so maybe he's got some paravalvular leak that I'll have to look at. The guy's got horrible images. I'd already gone through peristernals, I'd gotten to apicals, and this is where I'm at. I could have just gone through. I could have just adjusted my um, compression and just kept on moving on. But they did order it for aortic stenosis, so I had to do my due diligence and just kind of sweep through and just see if I could find anything. And that's what I did. This little faint whiff in the background, some noise that I could have used compression to get rid of. So in part of doing this, I always say leave our baseline settings. So your factory settings for compress and reject, leave them where they're at. Because if you do have something hidden there and you've already turned your, your reject up to nine or if you're on a GE machine and you've, you've uh, adjusted your dynamic range to its max, you're gonna miss things like this. So leave your compression and reject alone. Use them as a post-processing tool. But I saw that, I couldn't get anything better. So at our facility, we called somebody else. So I called another sonographer and I was like, hey, I think I got something, I really can't find it. You know, I'm trying to decide is it MR, is it TR, am I getting something else that probably shouldn't be there? So she comes down, I start preliming for her because that's what she was doing at the time. So I take over preliming, she struggles, she gets the PDOF probe out, she uses this, and she does end up getting three beats on the screen. But we can see that she had moved the probe a little bit, the beats really are too fuzzy, the baseline, there's a lot of noise there, and it's still faint, so she's not in line with the jet. So even if this was the only thing we could get, it's still not good, the patient's gonna have to go for TE, just because we don't have the information that the doctors need. So she's in there, she does all that, she's like, this is all I can get. So when left lateral doesn't work, what should we do next? We said it once. Roll on, right Roll on the right side. So this 336 pound guy, short of breath, I tell him, it's time for you to roll on your right side on this tiny little bed. And this man rolled onto his right side. I put the probe on and that's what I got. All I did was ask this man to roll on his right side. I could have let him go with maybe just barely qualifying crappy images that the doctor would have said, Michael, I don't know what you got here. We're gonna have to repeat this or give him a TE. But so because our, right this is right sternal border with him laying on his right side. The first one definitely needs some image optimization. At that point in time, I was sweating and frustrated. So I had everything maxed out. I used an ultrasound enhancing agent. I turned my gains all the way down. So the gain here is down to 15% with an ultrasound enhancing agent. You almost really could go to zero. Um, but again, he went from one and a half meters per second to four and a half meters per second. And all I did was roll him. So patient positioning is up the utmost importance. This guy uh, went on, he did end up getting a TAVR uh, fairly quickly after this. But so after those slides, I know you didn't get to see the entire study, but out of what I did just show you, what is something else that I probably should have showed the physician? So I'll go back, I'll show you these. These are beautiful. But what might have helped the physician even more? PDOF probe. So I said my other sonographer had used PDOF probe, but she didn't record anything, she couldn't see it. So she just left it out. This was one of my studies that went in front of the um, quality improvement for our quarterly quarter, qu quality improvement because I didn't use the PDOF probe for it. So it's something that we couldn't uh, submit to IAC. It was a great study. It was a great example of hard work and rotating the patient. But again, I didn't use the PDOF probe, so it really kind of negated all my hard work. Again, roll our patients, but also don't forget to use the our other tools that our machines have. And like I said, that patient did go on to get a TAVR put in. And so PDOF probe, but he wouldn't get the TAVR put in. I was the one who got to do it, so I qualified him. I was in the procedure doing it. And we normally go right to parasternals, and that's where we get our, our immediate gradients after deployment. So I see him, I already knew what to expect. Fairly normal gradients. I told the physician, hang on a second. The guy's supine and not on the right side. And I went ahead and did a right sternal board on him. His gradients were still through the roof. Uh, they had already they ballooned the valve, they fractured the valve that was in there, but this man will always have a higher gradient, and it's always gonna be found on that right sternal border. Uh, so again, the same thing happened on this post-op day one. The sonographers uh, really struggled with trying to get anything from him, and they ended up rolling him on the right side. Um, but again, this guy was a great example of the importance of turning our patients and patient positioning. Um, supine is fine, but really, if you've got anybody with any kind of cardiac disease or any kind of valve abnormalities, make sure you position these patients. Otherwise, you really are doing them an injustice.